Here, let's um, consider the system of first-order linear differential equations. Uh, x1 dot equals minus x1 plus x2, and x2 dot equals minus x1 minus 3x2. So let's write that as a vector equation. So dot means time derivative. So d dt of x1, x2 equals a matrix here times x1, x2. And the elements of this matrix, the first row will be minus 1, 1. And the second row is minus 1, minus 3. OK? Uh, in short for form, this is some vector. Time derivative of some vector is equal to some matrix A times the vector, OK? Uh, to solve this, we try a particular uh, ansatz or trial solution. We try x of t equal to some constant vector times the exponential, e to the lambda t. And when we substitute it into the differential equation, the derivative brings down a lambda. We can cancel the e to the lambda t. And we end up with the right-hand side, move to the left-hand side, is av equal to lambda v. And this is the eigenvalue problem. So the eigenvalue problem uh, we can write as a minus lambda i, i is the identity matrix, times v equal to 0. This will be the equation we use to determine the eigenvector. And then uh, matrix times v equal to 0, for this to have a non-trivial solution, we must have the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to 0. And this is called the characteristic equation of the matrix A. So for the 2 by 2 case, this equation uh, you can write as uh, simply as lambda squared minus the trace of the matrix A times lambda plus the determinant of the matrix A equal to 0. So this quadratic equation. Now the matrix A is this uh, minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus 3. So the trace here is minus 1 plus minus 3 is minus 4. Uh, the trace is minus 4. Let me write that down here. So this is minus 4. And the determinant is minus 1 times minus 3 is 3, minus minus 1 is 4. So the determinant is 4. OK, so then the eigenvalue equation is lambda squared plus 4 lambda plus 4 equals 0, which factors to lambda plus 2 squared equals zero. So we have an eigenvalue of minus two. Only one eigenvalue for this equation. So let's find the eigenvector associated with this eigenvalue. So remember we have a minus lambda i times the eigenvector equals zero. Our a I should put it here. Our a was minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus 3, minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus 3. OK. So to find the eigenvector, uh, we need to add 2 to the diagonal. Lambda is minus 2. So we add 2 to the diagonal. So we have uh, 1, 1 minus 1, add 2 to the diagonal, minus 1, times the eigenvector, which here I can call v1, v2. And that's supposed to be equal to 0. Uh, these are both the same uh, equation. The second equation is just minus 1 times the first. 
So we get V1 plus V2 equal to zero, or V2 equals minus V1. So the eigenvector is one. We can take the first component to one, and V2 equals minus V1. So one minus one, okay? And this is lambda equals minus two. So what we found is uh, one solution. So let me put that, so call that solution x1. We found one solution of the uh, system as v1 minus 1 times e to the lambda t, e to the minus 2t. OK? Um, we're missing one solution. So this is the case of only one, uh, one um, eigenvalue and one eigenvector. So how do we find? the missing solution. We're supposed to have two uh, independent solutions. Well, we can uh, try a different uh, ansatz, a different trial function. So to find the uh, second solution, we, we have to try something new. So we try x. It's not just t times the first solution, but it turns out to be a new vector w plus t times the eigenvector v times e to the uh, lambda t. Okay, so this is v is 1 minus 1, lambda is minus 2. So this is the trial form for the missing second solution. And the unknown vector here is w. So we're trying to find w. Okay. So when we substitute into the differential equation, right? so we have our differential equation in general form, x dot equals a times x. And we substitute in, we know that a times v, our eigenvector, is equal to lambda v, so we'll make use of that. So we uh, substitute in, so we take the derivative here, so the derivative of the first gives us a v times e to the lambda t, right, plus the first times the derivative of the second, that will bring down a lambda, so a v plus lambda w plus lambda t v times e to the lambda t. That's x dot. And that's supposed to be a times x. So that's supposed to be equal to a times w plus t times a times v. a times v is lambda v. So plus lambda t times v times e to the lambda t, okay? So we make use of the fact that a v equals lambda v when we do this right-hand side. So we look at this equation and we cancel. This one, of course, goes away. And uh, the lambda t v, the t dependence also is the same on both sides, okay? Um, so what do we have here? When we put this together, we have uh, a w minus lambda w. I can write that as a minus lambda i times w a w minus lambda w, and the other side of the equation just has a v. Okay, So this is, uh, lambda is known, v is known, so this is supposed to be an equation for w, right? An equation for w. So um, let's collect what we know, right? So a is minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus 3. A is minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus 3. Lambda, our eigenvalue, 
is minus 2 and v is 1 minus 1. So lambda is minus 2 and v is 1 minus 1. Okay? So we need to solve this equation for w. So a minus lambda i, uh, so that means we add 2 to the diagonal. So we have uh, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, times our unknown vector w, w1, w2. And that's supposed to be equal to v, which is 1, minus 1. Um, w1 plus w2 equals 1, minus w1 minus w2 equals minus 1. The first equation is, is the same as the second. The second just multiplies the first by minus 1. So then our constraint on w becomes w1 plus w2 is equal to 1. Okay, or we can write that as w2 equals 1 minus w1. Okay, so what is our w vector? So our w vector, we can write then as w1 and w2 is 1 minus w1. <coughs> so we can write that as um, the vector 0, 1 plus w1 times the vector 1 minus 1. Now the, the vector 1 minus 1 is just v, is just v. So this is 0, 1 plus w1 times v, right? Okay. So what was our ansatz? Our ansatz was we said x2 was going to be equal to w plus t times v times e to the lambda t, right? We multiply v e to the lambda t by t, and then we add to that an extra w vector. And now we get two pieces to w. One is the w1v, w1v constant times v times e to the lambda t. That's just x1, right? Remember our first solution was just v times e to the lambda t. So this piece, this piece here is just our x1 solution, right? So we can just take w1 equal to 0. It doesn't add any anything else, okay? So then we get uh, w here is uh, 0, 1. So our second solution then, x2 will be 0, 1 plus t times v. v was our 1. v was 1 minus 1, right? 1 minus 1 times e to the lambda t with lambda is our minus 2. Right? So then we finally we will get our general solution is the superposition of x1 and x2. So we get c1 times 1 minus 1 times e to the minus 2t our x1 solution plus c2 times 0, 1 plus t 1 minus 1 times e to the minus 2t. And that's our um, general solution. Okay? Now if we want to draw the phase space diagram or the phase portrait Uh, 
uh, we need to consider this vector 1 minus 1 so if c2 is 0 the solution follows x2 equals minus x1 let me draw that in red this vector here and going in and then um, the remainder uh, will have a very peculiar form for the case of a single um, eigenvector. Uh, I think it's easier just for me to show you the computer generated plot and then look at this form. So this is the eigenvector and then all the other solutions then are coming in. Okay, coming in like this. So it's kind of a uh, borderline between um, complex conjugate eigenvectors where you have a spiral in and then a uh, two real eigenvectors where they come in. So this is a borderline case. And this one has a definite handedness associated with it. So you can compute this uh, handedness in that all of these trajectories uh, coming in are going in the um, clockwise, clockwise fashion. Okay, I won't do that here, but uh, it's possible to, to show that this trajectory is uh, clockwise.